Good morning everybody, it's Tuesday today and, and um, as normal on a Tuesday now I'm a wee bit in of a rush because I'm um, going into school today. I uh, hope everybody's remembering that today is uh, National Day of Remembrance um, and that uh, at 12 o'clock uh, I think there will be a time of silence and then at 8 o'clock uh, we have to light a candle I think. Uh, but you'll probably hear all about it on the television today or in the newspaper or on social media. So uh, this is the day today uh, that we started, I think, the first lockdown. And uh, that was a year ago. And I think at that time we thought it was only going to be for a few weeks. And who would have thought that really a year later we would still be here and still not really cleared of... Um, anything and still all stuck in our own, house, our own houses um, and not able to meet up with people. But hopefully that looks as if um, it might happen yeah, a wee bit sooner outside anyway uh, with um, people from another household and hopefully as the time goes on and the vaccination programme uh, really ramps up and gets everybody covered then hopefully we will be able to meet again in groups and share some time together with people especially our families that we maybe haven't seen for a very long time now. So we are still reading Tear Fund Devotions and today is day 35 and it's entitled A Beautiful Potency and our reading today is from Gideon Hugh. We've had a few of his throughout the time and um, his reading is from Romans chapter 8 at verse 31 but I'm going to read Romans chapter 8. Um, starting at verse 18 and it's entitled The Future Glory I consider that what we suffer at this present time cannot be compared at all with the glory that is going to be revealed to us All of creation waits with eager longing for God to reveal his children for creation was condemned to lose its purpose not of its own will but because God willed it to be so Yet there was hope that creation itself would one day be set free from its slavery to decay and would share the glorious freedom of the children of God. For we know that up to the present time all of creation groans with pain like the pain of childbirth. But it is not just creation alone which groans. We who have the Spirit as the first of God's gifts also groan within ourselves as we wait for God to make us his children and set our whole being free. For it was by hope that we were saved. But if we see what we hope for, then it is not really hope. For who of us hopes for something we see? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. In the same way, the Spirit also comes to help us, weak as we are. For we do not know how we ought to pray. The Spirit himself pleads with God for us in groans that words cannot express. And God, who sees out into our hearts, knows what the thought of the Spirit is, because the Spirit pleads with God on behalf of his people and in accordance with his will. We know that in all things God works for good with those who love him, those whom he has called according to his purpose, those whom God has already chosen he also set apart to become like his Son, so that the Son would be the first among many believers. And so those whom God set apart, he called, and those he called, he put right with himself, and he shared his glory with them. In view of all this, what can we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? Certainly not God, who did not even keep back his own son, but offered him for us all. He gave us his son, will he not also freely give us all things? Who will accuse God's chosen people? God himself declares them not guilty. Who then will condemn them? Not Christ Jesus, who died, or rather who was raised to life and is at the right hand side of God, pleading with him for us. Who then can separate us from the love of Christ? Can trouble do it, or hardship, or persecution, or hunger, or poverty, or danger, or death? As the scripture says, for your sake we are in deep danger, of death at all times. We are treated like sheep that are going to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we have complete victory through him who loved us. 
For I am certain that nothing can separate us from his love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor other heavenly rulers or powers, neither the present nor the future, neither the world above nor the world below. There is nothing in all creation that will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is ours through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And God bless this reading from Romans 8. And Gideon Hugh has chosen as his verse from chapter 8 verse 31, which says, What then shall we say in response to those things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And then he goes on to say, There's an old saying, Give someone a fish and they will be fed for a day. Teach someone to fish and they will be fed for a lifetime. It is used as an example of how community development should be done. It makes a certain amount of sense, but it also has a problem. What does that person do when the fish run out, or when their equipment breaks, or if something else goes wrong? That is why at Tear Fund we don't just teach people to fish, we empower communities to solve their own problems using the resources they have to hand. Often this is done through local churches, using Bible studies to help people unlock their God-given potential. An example of this that I'll never forget was when Cyclone Idea devastated southern Africa in 2019. A support team sent by one of Tear Fund's partners arrived at a village only to be told they'd wasted a trip. The community had already swung into action and begun rebuilding. And then Gideon goes on to pray, God has placed a beautiful potency within each of us. Where there are issues weighing on your heart, ask God to reveal what you have in your hands that could make a difference. So take care everybody today. Doesn't look so good at the minute, the weather, but I think it might brighten up, but I think it's at least to be dry, so that's a, always a bonus for us. Um, look after each other. Any problem, let me know. I'm managing to catch up with most people now about the services. So if you would still like to come to the service and you haven't contacted us or you haven't spoken to Marjorie or myself, then please do that. Um, we are full, I think, for Sunday, the 4th of April. And I think there might be a space mm, or two maybe for Wednesday, which is the 31st of March. Uh, both services will be the same but we will be back on the 31st of March to start again with our Wednesday, Sunday uh, routine again. So take care, everybody. I'm away off to the school today. Remember the minute silence at 12 o'clock. Other than that, I will see you tomorrow, and that will be the middle of the week again. Who would think it? So see you tomorrow, everybody. Bye.